Hey everyone, and welcome back to our vlog about manufacturing. Today I'd like to be speaking about a subject that is not very often talked about in the context of low volume manufacturing or on demand manufacturing, and that topic is quality. How a mechanical designer can choose process specifications that will make sure that they get the exact quality and output that they want for their prototypes and low volume products. I would like to divide this discussion into two main points. And first, I think it's really worth going back again on the definitions of quality and especially the different definitions of quality that several people may have and specifically quality definition that a designer may have vs the definition of quality that a manufacturer may have. And we'll see just how important these uh, differences are to consider uh, when designing and then manufacturing a product. And second, we'll go over all the requirements and specifications, uh, considerations that you may have when designing a product for manufacturing, and as well as go over some tips and tricks of what you should and should not do to ensure that you get the right quality that you want when ordering your product. The designer and the manufacturer are the two people at a very holistic level that are involved typically in the manufacturing and uh, in, in the fabrication of a product. Uh, and you have a very big step between the designer and the manufacturer in which you have a translation of information. Let's say if you take a designer who will, let's say, uh, come up with functional requirements for their part, let's say if I take an aluminum part, a designer, whether they be uh, industrial designer or mechanical designer, they will have functional requirements for their parts saying, in more or less quantifiable ways, I want this part to be smooth, I want this part to have this roughness. These are functional requirements in the sense that you know how to measure them, but you don't know how they're made. And that's really important to consider when you're going to bridge the gap with the manufacturer. Because the manufacturer, they do know how to measure end results. They have a quality control department. A manufacturer will know how to uh, satisfy their functional requirements in several different ways, oftentimes. And that's very important to consider because if you don't tell the manufacturer which process and which technology they have to choose to uh, satisfy the functional requirements of the designer, then they have a judgment call to make. So the more a manufacturer has already the process requirements written down for them, the less trouble they will have in making sure that your functional requirements as a designer are met at the end of the day. And that's really important. Now I'd like to be speaking more in depth about how, as a designer, you can ensure that the quality that you want will be met by the manufacturer when making your products. And that's really important. And I thought I would break this down in three main tips, yeah, three main tips uh, on how to achieve that. And the first one is DFM. DFM, that stands for Design for Manufacture. Basically, whether you're working with CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, if you are the person designing parts, it is really important for you to know exactly the limitations of the technology and what designs are suitable or not for this technology. If I take the example of CNC machining, you will have a lot of limitations on sharp corners, tolerances that you can achieve. So the more complex your part is, basically the more you will need to learn so that you set up the manufacturer for success and not for failure. Second to DFM, there is the fact of using standard requirements if you're a designer. Less is more sometimes in terms of requirements when you want to bring products to the market in a really fast and consistent way. Let's say a manufacturer has to work with 200 different orders uh, a day, let's say 200 different CNC parts that they have to program, they can't come up with a process, with a custom process, let's say for the machining of this part, uh, every single time they will have a new design to program on their CNC machine. They will need to set up uh, standard per operational procedures, uh, they will need to set up uh, consistent outputs that they can for a specific process. Let's say the best example of that would be um, we know, for instance, that when you have uh, CNC machine parts in aluminum, as machined is a very consistent and very well, uh, very well defined standard for defining the surface roughness of an aluminum or even a plastic product. And if a designer chooses a, an as machined finish on a CNC machine part, they know almost for sure what the product will look like. And the manufacturer, that's where we come to the link between the manufacturer and the designer, the manufacturer also knows that when a designer chooses as machined, they have already an expectation of what the process will be, but what the result will look like. So it makes everyone move really fast on that definition and alignment of the specifications by choosing a standard requirement that is very easy for everyone to understand. The third important point that I'd like to be speaking about here is context. And context, meaning context of the part, meaning what you will be using them for, what product they will be integrated in, is a very important piece of information for the manufacturer. 
Some people may overlook this, and I mean, some people, some designers may overlook this because they will think, oh, look, I'm very educated on DFM, I know, uh, I know all the aspects of CNC machining, but there is always a point at which the manufacturer will be faced with minor conflicts. Let's say if we take a very uh, concrete example of, a, um, of an aluminum part where a designer uh, chose polishing as a surface finish, so manual polishing, um, that you know, we know exactly, the manufacturer exactly knows what polishing compound they will have to use, what surface roughness, etc. The process is really standardized. And let's say the designer also chose tight tolerances in combination with that. That's usually when you have combinations of two standard requirements that some conflicts can occur. And that's where the context is really important. Let's say on this polished aluminum part with tight tolerances, there is um, actually a part where polishing by hand will be detrimental to the tolerance. Either you can catch that at the DFM phase, let's say when you first give the order to the manufacturer, they may catch that discrepancy or that little conflict, but they may not. And in case, let's say, um, they have to meet a tight lead time, they may not have time to go ask the designer back for the information that they need to have in order to clear the conflict. So let's say if you're able to tell them as a designer, let's say in a note when giving the order that this piece will be used on the outside of an automobile and that let's say maybe the width of the part is the most critical of tolerances that, that there is on the part, then maybe they will be able already to think about some solutions when contacting you and say, hey, we've seen what the part has to be used for, we detected a conflict, we've sat down with the engineers that are in charge of the programming and we think you could do this or this or that. Let's say in that case, maybe masking the sides and not polishing them by hand if they're not visible so that then the tolerances will be kept but the visible surfaces will be also um, uh, polished as you required. And context in that case is super important because if in the case of the, the, the polished part you don't have that context, the manufacturer will just detect the conflict and they will either take a judgment call if they're too tight on lead time or they will just ask you about getting more details on the end usage because they are lost and just detected the conflict and that can take a lot of time, especially in the context of on-demand manufacturing where they have a lot of custom-made orders to do. So context is key and even if you think you have chosen really standard requirements, context will never hurt. So thanks everyone again for staying with us on this video and we hope that you learned something today about quality in the context of low value manufacturing. Um, of course, if you want to learn more about each specific process, I encourage you to visit our website to learn more about the processes. And of course, if you don't want to miss any future content that we will be covering uh, in the future videos, uh, click on the subscribe button and you'll make sure to be uh, notified when a new video comes out. Thanks everyone and have a nice day.